those kinds of things, things he's not doing, instead of whining and grabbing and crying and, and doing that whole thing. So that's the formula, is to do environmental. And you, the formula is, they say, to look online and look for environment, listen to these words, environmentally changing, so put in ADHD or ADD or hyperactivity disorder or impulse disorder and look up games to change environmentally or something like that. Okay. okay. Do you believe in the, um, if, if there's a special diet of foods that are definitely help hyperactivity? Yeah, that's the that thing that. too. Yeah, well, it's not even just sugar. No, it's you wheat and certain that, things. Yeah, I forgot the actress's name, but she has a website. Allergies will cause that too. And then he has allergies. Too. Yeah, allergies will cause erratic behavior. We're, we're heading towards asthma, probably. Yeah. I hope not, but I wouldn't I know it's difficult in this day and age. To allow, to not allow children to have what other kids have, but food is a huge, huge contributor to problems. It's a problem in schools because children always exchange foods, they trade. They trade. I caught my child, who I pack a healthy lunch, to trading her healthy food or uh, uh, fruit for Cheerios. Not for you, not Cheerios, but Fritos. The Fritos. The Fritos and Fritos. Chips. Fritos. You were eating them. Fritos, not Fritos. <laughs> Sir? Yes? So moving the energy. Remember with the, the healing hands? So it's not the laying on of hands for healing, but it's the moving of the energy. So just like you were saying, Reiki. Um, and I think I was telling somebody else about Qigong. Do you know, have you read into that, studied that? No. You've done that? Yes. It's time to give back. It's to do those things. It's important. Because doing that changes your chemistry and helps to uplift you. It's good. Very good. Some cheat guides around me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you this. There are people that choose to not have guides, okay? I think they're a little crazy if you ask me. If they, you know, do their whole life chart and everything before they come in and they decide they want to come out in without some little bit higher guidance, believe me, there's somebody trusting, you know, sort of watching out for them, but not like most of us have guides. Um, Let's see for you. You got some interesting ones. You know, and they're from all over, you know, so we can't just say, oh, you know, I've got an American guide or whatever. And I'm actually seeing some guy, it sort of looks like a sumo wrestler. He's huge. But it's, that's just how he's showing himself to me, okay? So here you have this large Asian man. And. And you've got three or four others, but they rotate. They come in and out. Your main guide, though, your, your spiritual guide, the one that cares for you the most, is actually of, of, of Asian, and I'm going to say of Japanese descent, and, and really like a big sumo wrestler. So in a weird way, he's like protecting you. So you start thinking that way, OK? Thinking of this big sumo wrestler that you know is not going to let anybody get to you. And it's funny because you chose him that way. Remember what we talked about earlier? You chose him for that. So you got to think about this. When you guys go to bed at night, you know, and if you're in any way feeling, you know, worried about what's going on outside or if somebody's going to break in or whatever, you know, you can easily do a cocoon around your house. And you, what you do is you ask that you can send, um, I send my energy, you see my protective energy 100 feet in the air and 100 feet in the, into the ground and 100 feet in all directions, and you can protect your home. But you have to really believe that that's going to work and know your own power. If you can understand and know your own power and know that your guides are there, then you can sleep comfortably. And that's how I go to sleep a lot of the times so is I'll lay there and I'll just talk to my guides. Next thing you know, I'm out. Boom. Because it's a comforting feeling. And when you understand that you've had, here you've had this person around you your whole life, who you talk to and who gets information into you, okay? He does. They, you guys download information like you, you know, while you're sleeping, when you're in reverie, when you're in meditation. You download all kinds of stuff that comes straight from spirit right into you. Okay, so this guy, even though he's this big guy, he's this big, sensitive 
guy. It's not mean or pushy, not like my guy who's mean and pushy. But, um, and I'll introduce you to Terre Haute is my guy. Okay, Terre Haute uh, is an Aboriginal shaman from Australia. He, I guided for him when he was in that life. So this is his last life. And every time I think about him, I always see dusty feet. If you've ever seen a bunch of Aboriginal dancers, and they're dancing around and they're stomping the ground, that's, I always see Tara's his feet. I've drawn pictures of him and all, all kinds of neat stuff. And he is just me. He just wants me to remember who I was in life's past. So like when I was working for somebody and, you know, I was working at a car dealership and I was working with all these just people that weren't very nice and, you know, and he would get mad, like, how dare you let that bother you? You've got to remember who you were. And he would just beat me unmercifully about the head and shoulders trying to make me remember who I was. And that's who you, what your guides do, okay? They build you up when you need to be built up, you know? When you're feeling bad, they're trying to give you encouragement. When you're trying to do things, it's like, you know, when we're trying to get a toddler to walk to us. You know, come on, you can do it, you can do it. They can't physically, you know, help you to walk. You have to do it yourself. But they're always trying to help you to come through. And so your guide is a big softy that cares after you and looks out for you and helps you to be wary. But then you've also got to learn to trust, too. So trust that's what's coming through. <laughs> you guys did it together. Go um, Could you tell me a little bit more about my main guide and then maybe one or two others? Your main guide is a lady and a sorry. And I don't know why I go to you because that's what they're showing me you. So, there's a lady of Hindu descent in a sari, and a very pretty sari, which is um, like, I'm going to say in an orange and yellow sari, very beautiful person. And her deal, as far as a spiritual teacher, she's very kind and very giving. She knows um, her own power, but she is teaching you what is her teaching? She's teaching you to be strong for yourself. Okay? There's a lot of things in, in I'm seeing it like in childhood that you weren't you didn't stick up for yourself. And so this was her thing is that you needed to stick up for yourself. And you were getting there in adulthood. You're getting there, you're sticking up for yourself. Um, but she's not terribly strong either. I mean she knows her power, but she's, you know. There was that part, was to teach you to stick up for yourself. She's trying to, she's showing me in the solar plexus to, the, not to be flighty about stuff, to be rock hard and be strong, but to do it in a feminine way and, you know, to not be offensive. And that is what she's saying is be strong but not offensively strong, you know, and to be, to teach children and to teach people to be strong, but in a kind and sweet way. So and she wants me to teach, is that? Yeah, and I'm seeing children in your past that you've taught in a good way to be strong and to stand up for themselves, even though you weren't able to do it. Your children were stronger than you were when you were young. I know because my kids are that way too. I mean, my kids can go ask for a sweet and sour sauce. When I was a kid, I was mortified. I would not go up to the McDonald's counter and ask anybody for nothing. You know, I just ate my food without it. But that's what, you know, we do that. We try to build our kids up stronger than we were, and you did that. And so that's what you wanted to do is to make them stronger. And she's a very beautiful lady. So, I mean, next time you see something that's flowy, um, like you see how she's holding this. Very flowy, sorry kind of clothes. And I want you to think for her. She's very sunny, beautiful. She has a bindi, uh, like a ruby bindi right here, which is the dot. They, they wear the little jewel. And so she's always dressed up to the nines. She always is just beautiful. Your other guides have to do with concentration and, don't ask me why this is, money handling. Concentration and money handling. 